Oh, what's going on, guys? Gamer Dude back once again, bringing you some more informative gaming news. But before we begin, y'all know the routine, or at least I hope you do by now. If you are new to the channel, please make sure you smash that like button and drop me a subscribe because it would just be your good deed of the day. Same applies if you are a returning viewer. Now then, uh, as you can tell from the title, we are going to be discussing today physical game releases and digital game releases and how digital releases seem to be phasing out physical copies. Now, me personally, I prefer physical copies because, you know, if there's a collector's edition, I always love to have a steelbook case and a statue. Or, going back even further, before the days of collector's editions and steelbooks, I just liked collecting the games. I liked showing off my game collection. I liked showing people that this is what I've got. Look at what I've got. But in today's video, we're going to be discussing if digital media is overtaking physical media and if it's the way of the future. So let's dive right into it. So apparently, uh, according to a poll, 90% of video game sales in 2022 were actually digital. So where does this leave the future of physical media? Now, obviously, the COVID pandemic has put a bit of a stab in physical games, you know, because with everything that was closed, people were obviously downloading more. And, you know, people have probably come to realize, oh, wait, this is so much easier than going to a store and buying a game. But we don't want that to happen. You know, we want a physical game, or at least I do. Anyway. In recent years, purchases of digital media have been on the rise, whether it's uh, video games, movies, TV shows, or music. Customers in their droves have been taking advantage of instant purchases and instant access to that particular form of media. I get it. It's easy. You know, it, when you pre-order something, I get it. You want it on the day at the time it releases. You know, instead of having to wait for a courier to deliver your pre-order to you or having to get yourself out of bed and go to a store and pick it up that way. I get it. It's much easier to get access to it. I understand. But it, is it really gaming? You know, because if your internet goes down, uh, these days that is, if your internet goes down, can you even still play that game? I mean, uh, when it comes to PlayStation Plus, for example, if you download a game via PlayStation Plus, if your subscription runs out, or if your internet is down, you cannot play that game. It will not let you play that game. Or I, I guess when it comes to like a what would be a AAA game release and not just download, you know, you could still play it, obviously, unless it was all online access and your internet was down. But anyway... Um, I would like to discuss if digital sales are actually taking over the video game industry. We, we already know digital sales have overthrown the movie and music industry, but what's happening on the gaming front? Now, according to a report from the BBC, roughly 9 out of 10 game purchases last year were digital. To be exact, the Entertainment and Retail Association, or ERA, claims that 89.5% of video game purchases made last year were digital downloads, while the remainder, 10.5%, were physical. I probably contributed a lot to that, not going to lie. <laughs> but yeah, uh, why is a huge chunk of video game purchases digital instead of physical? You know, some people might think 90% is definitely a huge chunk in terms of purchases. That number isn't quite as drastic as it may appear. A reason why that might be the case is mobile gaming. Year on year, as mobile phones become more advanced, so do its forms of video games. So are the numbers a tad misleading uh, you know have they just taken the figures from mobile downloads you know mobile phone downloads 
you know, whether it be free-to-play titles such as Pokemon Go, Shite Night, as I call it, <laughs> Call of Duty, or paid games such as Minecraft, uh, the several football manager games, or Stardew Valley, mobile gaming is massive. That being said, in the same report from the BBC, it is stated that around 30% of sales last year came from mobile gaming. So while it may be easy to assume that 90% of that number comes from the PC, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, Switch, mobile gaming does take a huge chunk of the 90% percentage. So what is it then? Physical or digital? M me personally, physical. I will only get digital if there's no way I can get a physical copy. I do have a few digital games, don't get me wrong, but it's not my primary form of video game collection. Uh, now, uh, I'm, I'm sure it will continue to push forward in the digital age. Physical media will perhaps become a thing of the past, which does pain me to say, you know, because like I said, I prefer the physical copies, you know, and one, one would hope that if they release collector's editions, that they still release a physical version, so, you know, you can get, like, a, a nice cool statue or a, even a cool steelbook case. Instead of just downloading, like, a full deluxe edition of the game through the Xbox Store or PlayStation Store, which doesn't give you anything except extra content, you know, where's the fun in extra content? I want a statue, you know, give me a statue. I want, Daddy wants a statue, you know? <laughs> But yeah, uh, don't get me wrong, I I'm a fan of digital gaming and physical gaming, and I can appreciate the benefits of digital gaming. As, as I said earlier, you know, it, it takes a load off, you know, it, it is a lot easier when you pre-order a game to play it on the day rather than wait for a courier or just drag your ass out of bed and have to go to the store and pick it up. So I do, I do see the benefits of digital gaming, so don't, don't think I'm biased towards it. Now, for starters, uh, let's say, for example, you are a disabled person who games. The ease of digital gaming is certainly a benefit, not to mention that it can, you know, you can easily share these digital games across multiple accounts. However, once again, I do still prefer to own physical media because no matter what, you own that item. At any given time, providers of digital media can fold, which could result in a loss of your purchases. At least if you own the physical form of the media, whether it's video games or movies, you will always own that item in your possession. And there's always a good chance that that item will be worth something in the future. You know, whether, whether you just want to keep it to yourself for nostalgia or whether you do think, oh, wait, I could make a tidy profit of this. It doesn't exist anymore. You know what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying there? But what's more, just take um, Google Stadia, for example. Google made a big song and dance about this digital platform. But after a few short years, yeah, it, it died. Most likely because it didn't produce anything good, but yeah, you get my point. It died. But it, let's say in the unlikely event that Sony, Microsoft, or Nintendo cease to exist, we'll always own the physical copies of, say, Uncharted on the PlayStation, Halo on the Xbox, or Legend of Zelda on the Nintendo. So if if they were to go under and you had them digitally you probably wouldn't be able to play them anymore. But um, th this is a topic that is very close to me, you know, because y you've, you've got a sense of, you know, of actually owning these titles, of owning these products and, and passing them on to another generation, you know, whether it be uh, your children, your children's children, or your, your cousins, your brothers and sisters, uh, anything really. But if you have it digitally, there's always the possibility that the console could break, and then you've lost it, and you've no chance of getting the hard drive back to get, you know, to get the data off of it. 
or there's always a chance you could lose your account and then you've lost the game. It's it's just it's just what I'm saying is if you have a physical copy as opposed to a digital copy, you can pass it along, you know, you can pass it on. You know, I can imagine passing my PlayStation 1 version of the original Spider-Man game to a five-year-old. Let's say this five-year-old happens to be my son or my daughter. And for them to, you know, look at it and feel it in their hands and pull it out and be like, what's this strange shaped object, which just happens to be the disc, you know, because I'm sh pretty sure by the time I have kids, discs will be a thing of the past as well. It will all be digital. But yeah, my point is I could, you know, hand it to them and see them inspecting it and then feeling that sense of, I want to try this, you know. Instead of it being just digital and then not being able to play it because either the console doesn't work anymore, uh, my account's deactivated or doesn't work anymore, etc., etc. I'm sure you understand where I'm coming from there. So the whole point of this video is for me to ascertain whether or not physical gaming is dead. Now, I want to say no. I really do, because I am a physical gamer through and through. I always have been, when, even back when I first started, you know, I, I always had uh, physical game copies, uh, even if they were sometimes pirated. <laughs> you know, when you used to get those old bootleg-style video games, uh, I remember those days. Those days were fun. Why can't we do that anymore? You know, uh, Im imagine a chipped PS5 and, you, and you're playing a, uh, a PS2 game on a chipped PS5. <laughs> But anyway, um, I'm, I'm trying to determine whether or not it's, it's going to be over within the next couple of years, you know, because the thing is, if you're, if you're a game developer, you have a sense of pride when you finish these titles, you know, and you want that, that title, even if your company does go under, say, uh, Naughty Dog, for example, with the, the Last of Us and Uncharted. Say if Naughty Dog goes under, and they make Uncharted 5, and they only release it digitally, there's no legacy, you know, because, once again, if people's consoles were to break, or they moved on to the next generation of consoles, that game is gone. It's just stuck on that old console which they will probably never go back to because of the new console i mean how many of you now you've got the new xbox or the new playstation or a brand new pc go back to your old consoles i usually don't the only time i go back to my ps4 now is if i need some gameplay footage for a video that i don't have on the ps5 so my, my point is the legacy of these developers is the physical copies you know to have developers release the physical copies that is their legacy if their company goes under and to lose that well you, you just losing a piece of yourself you know because you spend so much time developing this game you spend so much time making this game and then nothing nothing left of it so I, I, I think it, it does have a couple of years left in it before it goes to pot completely. But I do honestly believe it is going to completely go at some point. You know, it's, it, it is very difficult to say. It, it is very difficult to think about. But um, it's the way of the future, you know. It, it's, we're, mo we're moving on past the times uh, eventually we'll probably go away with consoles as well and we'll have these funky little doodads implanted into our brains 50 years from now and that'll be gaming but like virtual reality at the touch of a button on the side of your temple if you know what i'm saying <laughs> but yeah what are your thoughts on the increase in video game sales being digital let me know what you guys think in the comments below of course, I love debating things with with my community. I love talking about all of this with my community. Uh, so I would love to hear your thoughts and feelings on this, you know. Because once again, personally, I'm a physical gamer. And especially when it comes to collector's editions.
I've got uh, how many have I got now? One, two, three, four, five. I've got six collector's edition statues, and I plan to continue increasing my arsenal of collector's edition statues. I just I love collecting them, and I love collecting physical games. I think. Um, I've still got all my PS1 games somewhere. Uh, I think they're in somebody's attic or loft somewhere. I've still got all my PS2 games. They're on my bookshelf in my bedroom, as well as my PS3 games. My PS4 games, they're still sitting right in front of me in a nice uh, game case. Uh, my PS5 games are slowly pushing them out and replacing them. <laughs> but yeah, well, once again, let me know in the comments what you guys think. And that's it for this video. I actually did think this was going to be a bit longer, but oh well. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so stay tuned this uh, week for a couple of things. We've got some more informative videos coming your way. A couple more live streams. Not sure what they're going to be yet, but we will get them out there. Uh, of course, we are now less than a month away, 28 days away from the release of Hogwarts Legacy. Cannot wait for that. Really going to be pushing that game out this year on this channel there's a lot of content to come from hogwarts legacy on this channel you guys are gonna love it i know i'm gonna love it uh, especially because i'm playing it on the playstation i get the exclusive uh, playstation content don't believe there should be exclusive content but that's how it's been done so i'm obviously going to bring that to you and show it to you for those of you who game on pc and xbox so it's a big year for gaming. There's a lot coming. It's the biggest year for gaming since uh, the next-gen consoles dropped. So we, we have a lot to look forward to, so stay tuned. I am not going anywhere. Uh, so yeah, that being said then, uh, you all know the routine. If you are new to the channel, please make sure you smash that like button and drop me a subscribe because it would just be your good deed of the day. It also lets YouTube know that you enjoyed the video and it allows other people to enjoy it as well because it adds it to the algorithm. So until the next one, this has been GamerDude. Happy gaming and I will catch you all in the next one, guys.